doing, pretty? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Today, we're checking out some more SCP content. Today, we are checking out SCP-1025, Encyclopedia of Common Diseases. Now, based on that assumption, it's going to be a book with all the known human diseases that are out there, but it's also probably going to have a twist with it being anomalous diseases also written down in the book or causing them. That's where I'm going off based with this, whether or not I'm right or right by the end of this is to be shown because <laughs> i have no confidence that i am right but other than that we're going to get right into the, today's reaction video in three two one boom if there's anything that recent years have sadly taught us it's that diseases yeah. are an insidious and formidable enemy that can take you by surprise whether it's bacterial a virus a fungal infection or even an unfortunate genetic mutation like cancer alzheimer's or multiple sclerosis sometimes dealing with a dangerous pathogen could leave you praying for a run-in with scp-682 after all at yeah. least getting devoured by a giant um, evil reptile is it, i have to bring this up because i got lucky with the uh, COVID. i had it twice back to back on christmas for two straight years and all I had was like the sniffling side effects. I didn't have any of the other uh, side effects that happened afterwards. That was until the third time. That was after my trip to Tennessee in the summer of 2022, which was the last time I got COVID. Um, I had every symptom imaginable after coming home. It all hit at the same time. So I was sick for like a full straight week. That was not a fun experience. The first two times I had nothing but sniffling, but the second time, the third time it was worse. It was absolutely worse. Maybe because I didn't get it in New York. I got it in Tennessee and it incubated for several days. Uh, Tennessee, you're an interesting place. Is a quick <laughs> death. But take a page out of the SCP Foundation's book. Sometimes the best response to an imminent threat is containment and research. One of the first rules of combat is to know your enemy. It may seem like a tall order to have to write the book on dangerous diseases, but thankfully that book has already been written. It's oh? SCP-1025, the Encyclopedia of Common Diseases. This handy reader-friendly volume will tell you everything you need to know about all the common maladies you may find yourself facing, and a whole lot more. Okay, it from seems the like sniffles to lung cancer, I'm from right a cold so sore far. to necrotizing fasciitis. You may be thinking, why would I need some dusty old book to tell me about diseases? I can always just go to WebMD. But you don't want that. You know what the internet is like. They'll just tell you you're sick and you don't want them putting silly ideas in your head like that. How about you open up to a random page and we'll take a look. There. See? The common cold. Classic. Let's see the description. The common cold is a virus that affects the upper respiratory tract. Its duration is typically a maximum of two weeks, and its primary symptoms include headaches, muscle aches, a cough, a runny nose, raised temperature, pressure in the ears or face, and loss of taste or smell. See? Simple, straightforward, and objective. Exactly what you need. <coughs> Did you just cough? Hmm, that's strange. Hmm, and come to think of it, your nose is looking a little red. Do you need a tissue? Or perhaps a throat lozenge? Your voice seems a little hoarse. Perhaps you ought to take a break and lay down. Oh. You really don't. Is the twist of the SCP is if you accidentally read the disease, do you act? Do you catch it instantaneously? That would be wild. It looks so good. Seems like the common cold to us. Thankfully, you shouldn't have to worry about it for more than two weeks. Oh, and that reminds me. There is a certain anomalous effect to the Encyclopedia of Common Diseases. Am I right? Whenever you read about a pathogen in the Encyclopedia of Common Diseases, you catch it. Manifesting even right. its most severe symptoms <laughs> well, in not an extremely said brief the first period time. of time. Of course, this isn't that much of a problem if you just read the article about having a sore throat or a stomach bug. But what if you read the page for Ebola? Suddenly, you're half dead and bleeding from the eyes. Or the bubonic plague. Uh -oh. Or a disease that humanity has never even faced before. And what if, worst of all, the people who catch the diseases from this book continue to be contagious to others? It could be the basis for a world-destroying biological weapon and, at the very least, a bona fide Keter-class anomaly. When the SCP Foundation got their hand Well, that explains why it's in containment. <laughs> ...on this little hardcover anomalous nightmare, 
The researchers handling this thing realized it needed to be kept under lock and key. A new provisional site was created just to contain and research it without the risk of its anomalous effects starting an unstoppable global pandemic. The base was an isolated okay, I was about to underground say it's a bit bunker. Extra. I was about to say that's a bit extra for building an entire site for it, but when you think in the fact that it is diseases, it makes sense. Containing an even more high-security containment unit to store the book itself. A vault surrounded by at least 10 armed guards at any given time, rotated twice weekly, and checked for any infectious agents. There was even a powerful thermite bomb stored beneath the vault, set to go off and annihilate the entire chamber if the plausible risk of a containment breach was detected. It may seem insane to put in this many security failsafes for a simple anomalous book, but the SCP Foundation has dealt with dangerous books before. Take SCP-140, also known as an incomplete chronicle. This dangerous historical volume chronicles the living history of the Davites, an extinct Davites? culture of sadistic sorcerers closely tied to the mythos of the Scarlet King. Whenever oh. ink or blood is brought into the presence of this book, it absorbs the material, expanding the Davite history and bringing their terrifying rule ever closer to the modern day. Or take SCP-3512, The More You Know, A Pickup Artist's Bible, a deadly instruction manual made by a mind-controlling group of interests known as the Fifthists. This book gave its sinister practitioners the tools to control the minds of their potential romantic partners, often leading to their deaths. While it may not be quite as apocalyptic as SCP-1025 or SCP-140, the fact that there are so many in circulation still makes it a dangerous threat. Point is, a book can be a dangerous thing, especially if its pages have the potential to unlock deadly diseases like SCP-1025. As you can expect with an infectious Keterclass anomaly of this magnitude, procedures around this one were rigorous. The site staff was a skeleton crew, observing strict quarantine procedures to prevent any potential infection from leaking out into the wider world. Research into the history of the book was okay. inconclusive, despite a bevy of Foundation resources being poured into finding any worthwhile leads on the author or publisher of the book. Nothing. It was an absolute mystery who or what had put this ex- Well, it's like some SCPs in the world that can't, well, under the Foundation's control, that some just appear out of nowhere, but no explanation whatsoever, like SCP-5000, the suit. Where did it come from? Who made it? Why is it here? I mean, we know by the end of the story it doesn't work anymore, but why did the suit even come into existence to begin with? Even if it is from another universe. Makes sense, right? Who did things just appear out of nowhere? Like SAP uh, 682, where did he come from? Is there a definitive explanation as to why that thing is around? See where I'm going with this? K-class end-of-the-world scenario waiting to happen here on Earth. But now it was the job of these intrepid researchers to discover the full extent of its potential dangers. 27 D-class subjects were allocated to the base for testing. By the Wait, time how many? Majors, 27 D-class subjects Wait, so were allocated to the base that. for testing. By the time the process was over, none of these unlucky prisoners would remain alive. The test started much like this video. The researchers forced a D-class to read the section on the common cold. Within two hours, the subject began coughing. Upon being asked, they also reported feeling physically achy, though they attributed the ache to sleeping on an uncomfortable D-class cot every night. The researchers were concerned already. The incubation period for the common cold, meaning the period a person is infected before showing active symptoms, can be as long as three days. Two hours is unprecedented. Next, a D-class was told to read the section on chickenpox, a common childhood malady that can be considerably more dangerous in adulthood. Within an hour of being exposed, the D-class repeatedly scratched no less than five points on her body repeatedly. While she claimed that this was because of the itchy D-class jumpsuits, it was too eerily close to a symptom of chickenpox to be ignored. The medical history of this D-class also showed that she'd suffered chickenpox in childhood, suggesting oh. that SCP-1025 infections have the power to override previous immunities. Next, things got a little more serious. They tested the uh -oh. section on lung cancer on a D-class with no family history of lung conditions. Not long after, the researchers noted that the D-class coughed an unusual number of times. Not only that, 
they picked up irregularities in the D-class's breathing that appeared to be characteristic of lung cancer. While the D-class did not report any feelings of chest pain or discomfort, the researchers had him terminated and dissected. No I tumors just killed him. were found. A researcher noted that they didn't wait long enough for proper tumor manifestation. They knew they heard that D-class coughing. The researchers were so concerned by the results of the previous test, they repeated it exactly with another D-class, who they then observed over a period of seven days to track tumor manifestation. Researchers made a note of an unusual amount of coughing and wheezing from the subject over this period of time. The D-class was then terminated and dissected. But surprise, surprise, no tumors. Researchers began to consider the frightening possibility that signs of SCP-1025-induced illnesses disappear after the victims die, meaning that a pandemic started by SCP-1025 would be impossible to properly track and respond to. Things were only getting scarier and scarier for the SCP-1025 researchers, sequestered away in that isolated foundation bunker. Researchers continued to delve further into- you know, I was gonna ask that question too, but before I could even pause the video, they were already talking about it, so I just let it go. <laughs> lung cancer rabbit hole. This time, however, they didn't wait for the subject to die before looking at their insides. They instead performed a vivisection on the subject, only to find that despite the victim still being alive and displaying some of the key symptoms of lung cancer, there were no tumors. What could this mean? So it displays the symptoms, but when it comes to specific diseases, they can't actually be seen or heard. I mean, they can be heard, but they can't physically be seen on the inside. That's, I don't even know what to say. These diseases weren't behaving like any of their non-anomalous counterparts. What other differences could we be dealing with here? Infectious lung cancer? And what if there are more books out there, like time bombs just waiting to go off? The tests continued, getting more isolated and more intense. In the end, the SCP-1025 site was staffed by only three researchers and two agents acting as guards. D-classes were sent in one by one to minimize ration requirements. It seemed that they could have been dealing with one of the most dangerous anomalies of all time. Even working with it could be a trigger for the apocalypse if the proper containment and quarantine procedures weren't observed. Things got so out of hand that a D-class without an appendix was told to read the section on appendicitis, and researchers still observed him exhibiting symptoms of the condition. He was vivisected, and while the appendix was still not present, the organs in the area where the appendix would have been seemed redder than usual. When would this nightmare oh. end? Well, it would actually end much sooner than anyone involved would anticipate. Despite never even reading SCP-1025 himself, a researcher developed a strange, persistent cough and was quarantined in a containment chamber by his concerned colleagues. On the seventh day of his containment, he seemed to be slightly taller than before, a symptom of SCP-016, a deadly, anomalous bloodborne pathogen 016. that multiplies wildly and rewrites the genetic structure of its host if placed into a high-stress situation. This led to a number of terrifying revelations. Not only did the book have the potential to inflict a number of anomalous diseases, but it could also potentially do so by pure proximity, even if you don't actually read it. What other anomalous diseases could be on the table now? What about SCP-008? A terrifying prion with both 100% virality and 100% lethality. Or SCP-742? a retrovirus that slowly but surely transforms its victims into cannibalistic monsters, or even the horrifying SCP-217, the disease that slowly converts- Okay, I don't know if it would be posted or posted after the by the time this video comes out, but I did already react to the clockwork of virus. I don't know when this particular video is coming out, but it's likely that the clockwork virus reaction video is already out by this point. So I've already seen this one. It's your entire yeah, body I into a mechanical nightmare. There would be no limit to the horrors SCP-1025 could unleash on the world if it ever got out. They needed to keep this thing locked up at any Why cost. Why would they just destroy it? That's when the infected researcher escaped and all hell broke loose. The isolated facility went dark for 72 hours. After not being able to get into contact with any other Foundation bases during that time, a recovery team was sent to investigate the mystery. One agent and one researcher were found in the observation booth, wearing biological containment suits. 
Another agent was found crawling through the air ducts with his handgun drawn, a crazed look in his eye. An additional researcher had locked himself in the barracks with a homemade flamethrower, paranoid about infection. And the final agent was found dead in a storage locker, with some empty bottles and ration packages, after having given the door an airtight seal to prevent infection, then dying of suffocation inside. The O5 Council shuttered the entire investigation. SCP-1025 was downgraded from Keter to Safe Class, then placed in a storage locker. The whole thing was considered a wash. We know what Are you're you probably serious? wondering. Why? If this anomaly was so incredibly dangerous, why on earth would the O5 Council and the rest of the Foundation be dealing with it so casually? Well, that's simple. The initial batch of researchers had grievously misjudged the actual anomalous effect of SCP-1025. It doesn't give diseases to those who read its text. Instead, it induces a form of hypochondria by proxy to those around the reader. Oh. In other words, while SCP-1025 has no effect on the reader, it makes everyone around them merely believe that they've come down with a terrible illness. The few members of staff in that isolated site had been killing and dissecting D-classes for no reason. In effect, they had all effectively gone mad due to the anomalous effects of SCP-1025 and the paranoia induced by pressure and isolation. Much like your average hypochondriac, they warped the data to fit the worst possible outcome rather than the most mundane and likely. As an old medical expression goes, when you see hoofprints, think horses not zebras. The entire thing had been a terrifying waste of time, money, and human life. So perhaps in the end, the Encyclopedia of Common Diseases is a lot more like WebMD than we thought. It's not nearly as useful as getting a consultation with an actual doctor, and, of course, it's liable to put some very strange ideas in your head. Now go check out SCP-2852 Sadistic Madman Party Crasher Cousin Johnny and SCP-701 The Hanged King's Tragedy for more SCP- That actually took a spin I wasn't expecting at the very end. I thought it was like... It would produce the anomaly itself with the person, but no, it's just affecting the state of mind of everybody else around them. <laughs> That's, uh... Not something I was expecting in the end there. So everything I said at the beginning ended up being right at the start, but not in the end of this video. So. <laughs> I don't know what else to truly say. Other than that one threw me for a loop and threw me off course as to what I was really thinking. And before you guys ask in the comment sections. I've already seen the two SCP videos that popped up on screen here at the very end, so I won't be reacting to them in the future. I've already seen them, and it, wouldn't, it would just be a fake reaction at that point. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next reaction video. Bye!